All right, so we got a steam boiler here. This is one I've had to do quite a bit of work on. It just cleaned all the side glasses up a few weeks ago, tested and cleaned all the safeties, and basically it's not one to run. Um, I've had problems in the past with my in switch down here on the blower section basically not closing and that would keep it from getting its cough to uh, run. Right now it says it's calling for standby. That is my controller because you have to buy one because they don't come with the controller. Anyhow, we've got an Tecmar controller here and it shows that it's calling because you can see the little flame right there that is uh, saying that it's calling for heat. So something's shutting it down which most likely is going to be one of the safety switches up here whether it be the floats or the uh, pressure switches. So um, I don't want to jiggle nothing. I want to see if I can catch it. So I went through there and checked all the switches and that don't have anything on any of the terminals and nothing in between it. So it's not not uh, anything going on there. So now we're going to work our way over to the floats. The one right here is our high voltage going to our pump. That one right there is high voltage going to the control. So it's uh, no issues there with that. It's closed. The only one left here is this one to take a look at. This really is about the only things that shut this thing down other than that end switch down there on bottom, which I suppose it could have malfunctioned. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Now I just moved that and then it starts to work. So I can't help but wonder if that bumped the control. Yeah, so it's going into its purge right now. Pilot ignition. Flame signals at 5 volts, which is good. Huh. Well, yucky ducky. There's the end contacts with the low water cut out. Everything on it looked pretty good. It's tight. But unfortunately I didn't get to it in time to check it before it kicked on. So that kind of stinks. So we'll kind of watch it for a little bit, see if we can get it to act up again, but it may take a couple days for it to do it. So um, now that that's made, we now have 120 volts coming in and out of each one of those switches. We kind of will see. The wires come in. One of them comes straight up to here, leaps back out, and goes to the other ones. And since I had nothing between any of these or over here, this was not getting power. So before these get power, I'm pretty sure it goes down here down below. If that's the case, maybe it was that doggone end switch again. So we'll need to follow that and see where it goes. I bet you anything it might be. Yeah, see here's the those there. Yeah, I'd have to dig in here a little bit. Alright, so the steam boiler went down again. It uh, started working on me. When I was here last time, so Let's see what's going on. If you notice, there's no call for heat there. Water level is right there. They said it didn't come on, but this thing still feels warm. It's not like blazing hot. Coming over here, we're looking at the burner there. Shows it's got a call for it. It's not happening. And what I suspected the last time was the. Uh, switch down here on bottom might have been uh, sticking and not happening so that was why I ordered a new one we're looking at it it's crushed down in there like it should be so the question is let's see if we can open this up without jarring it because I think that's what happened the last time and check voltages real carefully so I'm gonna go ahead and check voltages here on these terminals but none of that was very well labeled originally so let's see if we can catch it. This is just one of them things where, you know, it's it's a major pain in the butt when uh, things don't want to act up the whole time you're there. All right, 24 and 25 is my damper switch, and it shows to be dead. One and 
two. It's my thermostat. Let me check those real quick. All right, so the two purple wires, three and four, have a weird voltage on them. They are, let's just go top there. They are right in there at 77, 78 volts. So it's not completely open, it's not completely closed. So we've got an issue there, but we're not sure which one it is. Um, because these are all in basically a series loop, one to the next to the next to the next. Last time I bumped that and that was when it started working like it was okay. And unfortunately they didn't just go up, back, checkpoint, up, back, checkpoint, up, back, checkpoint. I went through and checked all those last time. So let's see if we can just double verify it a little bit more. Because if those ain't closed, she won't, uh, won't run. Because that basically lets the machine send power over here to the uh, burner mechanism, which we can check there. Let's see what we got on that. If there's getting a call for it, which it's not. Okay, so if we check from our neutral, which is these white wires here, should have grabbed the GoPro and go to three. Three is 121. Go to four, which is the return path. We got 2.9. So now we gotta, like I said, dig into these controls. I have a feeling it's this one right here. Let's see if we can gently take this cover off without jarring it. All right, sure enough, we have 78 volts on that. Let's see if I can get my fingers on there. I had a funny feeling that might be it. I think we seen that yesterday. Then all of a sudden it started working. Yeah, it's near impossible to do with, with two individual. Yep, see, there it started working. Yeah, so I don't think it's a float sticking. Basically, we got that going on. All right, so I didn't trust those connectors. I'm gonna go with the round ones. I don't usually like these because this thing's kind of been so critical and acting stupid. I'm gonna go ahead and just chop them both off, put them both on with the uh, O-style, put brand new ones on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that connector, put it on there, put her straight in. That should give us a nice tight connection. We're gonna tighten it up pretty good. Um, I have a feeling that, you know, we might get away with this. We may need to replace the switch. I don't know, and chances are they probably don't have a switch locally here in town anyway. So I'm just going to do with what I got to go with right now. And so we're going to get that on there. And we're going to try it and see what happens. I should have went with my gut yesterday, but didn't want to just replace it if that wasn't what was wrong. There we go. So we'll go ahead and get this in there and that's going to, my feeling is it's going to be a better connection with these than the others. This is 120 volts when it's powered. So we will snug those up with our little cheater there. You guys, that's right like there, something pretty handy. It uh, straight head screws for the dirt bag that designed the straight head screw. It uh, works great for holding them in place. Don't have to worry about magnets. I mean, I'm, I like magnets, but it just makes it so much simpler to get the screw started. It's not good for torquing it, but it's good enough to get it in there. All right, so we've got that in there. They are separated. I'm just gonna leave that off for now. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. So we should be good there, power's on. I'd like to have, for something like this one to act stupid, I'd love to have more of those little lights. So let's go over here and turn this an equation on. And that should be the only thing we need to turn on. So it's calling right now. It's gonna go through, let's delay warm up. We could, which is never a bad idea, go and blow this turd down a little bit. That way we can make sure that the safety does work. Let's go ahead and do this one over here. This one will trip it out pretty quick because it just flies right by it. 
This should be getting done once a day. Problem is it doesn't. So while we got that there, let's go ahead and kill that power again. Let's go ahead and check that switch. Got all that all uh, marked. Let's go ahead and take that switch apart, take a look in there. And all that is, you can kind of see in there's switch mechanisms right there. Kinda. Kinda can see. So you can see there's a little roller. That's the float. The float goes up and down pretty easy. That's the ball float in there. So we know that's not getting stuck on nothing. That's a nice little check you could do. So we know it's not getting stuck. You can see it wiggling. And then that rocks that baby back and forth. So yeah, it's the top switches. So in reality, depending on what it is, you could probably switch it to the other ones, but the problem is this does have high voltage through it, so there's probably some arcing going on inside there. So now that we caught it, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. So it just refilled, side glass is back to it. It's doing its one minute purge, then it'll kick back on. Safety there, it's using the ultraviolet light from the flame to maintain the safety control. So it just shut off because the water came down kind of low. This thing's kicking in when it needs to, but I mean it just isn't fast enough to keep up. Like I said, it's it's running. This thing's kind of a dungeon down here. She's running, comes up through the check valve, comes up over all the way across and down into the back side of the uh, boiler here and then fills into there. You can see where I took this one apart, had to build a gasket for it, which is this, I'm kind of curious how that turned out. Kind of, I hadn't really used it before. It's a uh, Loctite gasket maker. Kind of still feels a little sticky, but it's not leaking, which is nice. Uh, inside that uh, steam trap there basically is a little ball. And I have a video of it, I'll show it right now. All right, so just in case anybody wanted to know what's inside of a steam trap, here's a steam trap on a steam boiler, obviously. So I wasn't able to get the plugs open very easily with the way this thing's mounted. Last year I took it apart uh, at the uh, union here and flushed it through, but this time I decided to go through this cover here. Basically you got a total of six bolts and you've got a pocket right here this is completely sealed and the water comes in from this top line here on this boiler goes through there's got like a uh, blow down valve so to speak here comes across goes into the top and as it accumulates it comes up and it rises up and then it will lift this float higher when the float lifts up higher, it opens up the seal right there and blows the water on through this bottom compartment. So as you can see, that's the seal for it. So a stainless steel thing. Now there's something inside of this ball. It uh, feels like lead or something like that, but it's a stainless steel ball. So anyhow, that right there opens that compartment, which then lets the water the steam will push the water on down through the bottom there, which is where it lines up to that right there. Then this water will be shoved through the check valve, up, across, and then back to the reserve water tank over here. The reserve water tank has a pump on it. That pump is controlled by a float over here. The float in this particular one has mercury inside of it. If it gets too low, one set of mercury drops, which sends high voltage over to the pump over there, and then it'll start pumping that water back. Uh, the water comes out of that pump there, up, over, around, and down into the rear of the boiler. So we ordered a new switch for it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the inside 
uh, float sensor while we're at it, but the problem was mainly the electrical switch mechanism. What I'm doing right now is just draining it down so that I can go ahead and get this out without getting scalded. Look at that. So I got that marked top, not that it makes much of a difference because it's just a teeter tot up and down thing. All right, so I ended up putting some tape over here. I tried using another Romex connector nut over here. That made it too thick, couldn't grip onto that side there because that was getting really close to the, uh, the connection there. So went ahead, just put some tape there as a spacer. I didn't have a big washer. Tighten that up, wrap the switch, put it together, made sure it's adjusted correctly. Everything seems to be good there. You can see the water is finally getting up there where it about needs to be at. Just came on. She's gonna go through a one minute purge, 10 second pilot safety, and then it'll should fire off down our valve is down there. Hydraulic valve. My controller's out in the uh, truck that you can put on there and wash. It doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot, but. goes so it's ran ever since I cleaned that connection up then it stopped and finally got back to get it put together get the parts put on so to the best of my knowledge that's all that was really wrong with it so we're just gonna have to see see how she acts now I did add a time delay to it Put a time delay of about 10 minutes on here with an isolation relay that keeps the high stage from coming on for at least 10 minutes and then uh, there's a switch up there top right corner that will shut the high stage down once the pressure builds up to around one and a half area and uh, the other two are just cutting cutouts so Trying to make it work as best we can with what we got to work with here. It's not the uh, most elaborate system in the world, especially when you've got an oversized boiler over there that usually gets flooded out because they don't really need it to run. And uh, as you can see, this building is really, really old. And it's too expensive to come in here and try to change things out now.